When Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe called climate change a hoax, many wrote him off as a kook from a skook, while others, like Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz, jumped on the bandwagon. Well, it turns out they were right. Tonight, the scientists behind the global warming hoax tell us how they pulled off the biggest practical joke of all time. Joining us in the hot seat, Dr. Barb Dawson, scientist. 97% of scientists acknowledge that global warming is real. How did you convince the academies of science in 80 different countries to participate in your hoax? I think as scientists, AKA nerds, we're used to being the target of pranks. Noogies, atomic wedgies, swirlies. Mm -hmm. But I think this global warming hoax was a chance for the scientific community to prove we can dish out pranks too. And we crushed it! But even NASA says it was real. Most astronauts were voted least popular and most ugly in high school. They needed this prank vindication more than any of us. But how did they pull off a prank of this scale? For instance, how did they get footage of polar bears clinging to tiny pieces of ice? My family has been teaching bears to act for centuries. So you were responsible for teaching the polar bears to look sad and hungry. At first, I cast uh, polar bears from Coca-Cola commercial. I said to them, you are starving. The world is melting. Then we find Boris. Boris is a metal actor bear. Like uh, Daniel day -Lewis. I can't believe so many people fall for such silly prank. <laughs> I mean, I'm no scientist, but uh, if global warming is real, then uh, why am I freezing my ass off? <laughs> Dr. Dawson had a 100% believable explanation for all of my hard-hitting questions. What about the glaciers that have disappeared? You'd be surprised what 300 beauty school dropouts with Conair Pro hair dryers can do. Well, now that scientists have gotten a taste for pranks, what do you think you'll do next? Oh, this wasn't our first prank. <laughs> Between you and me, tobacco doesn't cause cancer. No one has ever been to the moon, and germs aren't really a thing. We just made that up because most scientists don't like touching other people. <laughs> I was going to quit. Up next, a feel-good story about the Koch brothers' Coal for Tots initiative. The existing Keystone Pipeline only spilled 30, uh, 33 times in first year of operation.